So today we're looking at a tool that describes itself as Space Age said, which is sort of a, a nonsense description because what it actually is, is a batch search and replace tool that does a diff of the changes. Obviously said can be used for search and replace as well, however said is considerably more than this. So this application is called SAD, otherwise known as Space Age SED, with the D being used in the acronym rather than the S because I'm guessing because there's already a CSS framework called SAS. So the way this works is actually kind of weird. I've never seen an application do this before, but it doesn't actually accept any file arguments. If we want to pass a file into it, we actually have to pass the name into the application through a pipe. So let's say we want to edit something like my multi monitor script. So what we can do is pipe that into SAD. So this takes in two arguments, it takes in a regex to match on and then what to replace that regex with. So let's say that we want to do something like replace any line that contains a comment with, I don't know, hello world. And if we go and run this now, what it's going to do is actually open up FZF so we can see every file that's being modified. So so in this case, as we can see, we have two lines being edited and nothing actually gets edited until I go and press enter on the file. So if we go and press enter now, and let's actually go and look at that file. So multi-monitor, as we can see, those two comments have now been changed to hello world. But this is intended to be used for batch editing. So what we can do instead is use an application like find or FD and then pass in every file that we want to edit. So let's say that we want to edit every single thing that is of type file and then pipe that into sad. And let's do the exact same thing before. So we're gonna edit any line that contains a comment. And we're gonna be changing that just to hello world. So as we can see, it shows every single file we're modifying. And when there are multiple entries for a single file, this is actually broken up into every single diff chunk. Now this preview happening on the right hand side here isn't actually being done by this application. This is actually being done by an application called, I think, Delta which is one of the diff tools that this calls to actually do the preview. Now I mentioned that if you actually want to save the changes, you have to go and press enter on the file. Now obviously you can't go and press enter on each of these individually because once you've gone and selected one, it will then go and close FZF. So this actually has multi-select enabled by default. So if we go and press tab, it's actually going to go and select all of these and then we can go and press enter and it will go and run on all 28 files that we just selected. So let's go and bring up say, the color 256, so less color 256. And as we're gonna see, it says hello world in here now. FCF actually does have a function to do select all. However, by default, it's not actually bound to a key. So if you wanna go and do select all, you have to go and modify your FCF configuration. Now, as you can probably tell by what FD returns, SAD accepts a new line separated list of file names, but if you don't want to use a new line separator, what you can do is pass in the dash zero option, and that's going to require you to use a null character separator, which looks a little something like this. So if we go and run this now, as we're going to see, it treats every single file name that we just passed in as a single file name and doesn't work. Personally, I don't really see a use case for this, but I'm sure someone can find something. Now I mentioned that when it doesn't match, it does it with a regex. So you can actually go and modify how the regex actually works. And the way we do that is by passing in the dash F option. So by default, it uses smart case and a multi-line match. So smart case basically means that if your search pattern contains a capital, then it's going to be case sensitive. But if it doesn't contain a capital, it will be case insensitive. And multi-line basically means treat the file as a file that has multiple lines in it. Whereas if you do single line, it will treat it as if the entire document is just a single line. So for this, we just pass in the flags we want to use. So if we want to do case insensitive, we do lowercase i. Case sensitive, we do capital I. If we want to do multi-line, that'll be M. If we want to do single line, that'll be capital M. So a good example of the way that multi-line and single line differ is let's set it to multi-line. If we do a search that looks a little something like, say, uh, E and then the end of the line. So what this basically means is that on each individual line, at the start of the line, there will be an E and then the line ends. If this was the single line version though, what this would mean is the document starts, there is an E and then the document ends. If we pass in an S, what that's gonna mean is if we do a dot in our search here, the dot will be able to match on new line characters. So by default, dot will ignore those characters. And if you pass in an X, this will mean that your match will ignore white space and you can write comments inside of your match. Now you can actually include multiple things in here at once. So we could do something like say, 
uh, case insensitive single line allow dot to match on backslash n and go from there. And if we were to run this now, basically what it's going to do is take every single character in the file and replace every character with the phrase hello world. Now up until this point we've been doing regex searches, but we can also do a fixed string search as well. And the way that we do that is by passing in the dash e option. Now the difference between regex and fixed string Basically what a fixed string will let you do is let you do partial matches on a string. So if we passed in say like, I don't know, TRU, that would match on anything that contains the letters TRU. So this can be emulated with a regex, but the benefit of just using a fixed string instead of a regex is if you need to work with say, any of the special characters that exist inside of a regex, like say a star or a carrot symbol or anything like that, you don't have to go and escape them like you would in a regex. But let's go and run it just without these symbols here and see what's going to happen. So as we can see, anything that contains the letters TRU will be replaced with Hello World. So let's find another one, like say this one right here. TRU in true is replaced with Hello World. Basically, it's like that. So I was slightly wrong about the application I'm using to do this coloring. Both of them will work, but I'm actually using diff so fancy, not delta. So let's go and disable that and just see what it looks like. So if we just pass in the dash P option and set this to never, as we're going to see, this is what it looks like without any sort of coloring. It still shows you the diff, but it's just not as fancy looking. So we can specify what application we want to use for this. Let's go set it to what we were using before. So uh, diff dash so dash fancy and as we're going to see it's back to how it looked so this relies on whatever your git page variable is currently set to we can go and modify what option is being passed into fcf the way that we do that is by passing the dash dash fcf option and from here you can say i want to pass in i don't know dash p is that a thing that fcf has i have no idea the other thing that we can do with this though is if we pass in never what this is going to do is basically disable the paging so as we can see, what it does is just dumps everything directly into our terminal. So what we can do is go and combine this with dash dash commit. And what that's going to do is make all the changes without actually prompting us with the diffs here. So if we go and run that, it tells us every file that's been modified. And if we go into our files here, as we can see, basically everything just says hello world. Now, obviously, if you don't want to see which files have actually been modified, just go and redirect the output to somewhere like slash dev slash null. Now, I just want to briefly talk about some of the issues that exist. One of them is the fact that this tool really shouldn't compare itself to sed because sed is more than just a simple search and replace. Obviously, as I said at the start, it can do that. However, I think that distancing itself from sed would be a good idea because what people are going to do otherwise is look at this tool and say, sed can do way more than this, so why would I bother using this? Yeah, the diff is nice, but I don't really think that's enough to get people to actually use this application. Another thing is that I really would like to see some handling of very basic things that should always be handled by the application. Things like, let me pass in a file name, I shouldn't have to use an external application to do that, or let me have quiet output, I shouldn't have to go and redirect everything to slash dev slash null. It's a pretty normal thing to have a something like a dash Q or a dash dash quiet option that just automatically does that for me. It's just a nice addition that makes it a little bit easier for the user. Also, the documentation for this is, it's obviously a very small application, but even so, it's still lacking in some places. So if we do sad-h, because there's no man page for this, even though this is formatted like a man page, so I don't know if the author has manually written it like a man page, or if it's actually formatted like a man page, and there's just no man page for it. I don't actually know. The problem I have here is, it keeps making reference to things like pattern, and unless you go and read this part right here, which mentions that it uses standard regex flags, you don't really know it's actually using a regex. Even at the bottom right here where it explains the args, it doesn't actually explain that this argument right here actually is a regex. The only reason I could work that out is because I messed around with it, and then I realized that this was right here. This should just say regex pattern. It wouldn't be a massive change and would make it a little bit easier to start using. And while we're on the documentation, these two right here just shouldn't be in the user documentation. If they're for internal use only, don't include them in the documentation that you give to the users. It's just a really weird thing to be doing.
So overall, I think this is a really neat tool. And even though tools like Sed and Orc do basically everything this tool already does, I think it is really cool that there are developers out there still making tools for those situations. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph Peter, the Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. I think that's pretty much everything for me. It is... 35 degrees Celsius right now. I'm going to go turn my air conditioner on and I'm out.